Welcome to MyEyeAcademy.com. I'm Professor Mahfouz Hussain from Pakistan. MyEyeAcademy.com is a platform for filmic teaching, particularly for undergraduates. In this video, VHP Chapter 7, Section 2C will be describing the complications of bacterial and fungal keratitis. In this lecture, we'll discuss the complications of bacterial and fungal keratitis. First of all is the persistent epithelial defect. Persistent epithelial defect means that the ulcer has healed, but there is a still epithelial defect. If that epithelial defect, which is stained here, if it doesn't heal up to 10 days, we call it persistent epithelial defect. The options are lubrication, like the frequent tear eye drops, preservative free eye drops, bandage contact lens, which is a big contact lens which covers the whole cornea, tarsorephy temporary, which means closing the eyelids, and serum eye drops, which you make from the blood of the patient. Remember, all these options are MCQs, so remember options on this slide and options on the other slides because every single line is a MCQ. A next complication is the gutter, which is the cornea gets thin where the ulcer was. Though the ulcer is treated, but this gutter is formed. Now it's liable to get infected and will keep irritating the patient. If it's a small one, you can treat it with a conservative way like giving the artificial eye tears, or you can use the amniotic membrane to fill the gap, or you can use the keratoplasty. Here in this case, you can see a small piece of the cornea, which was taken from the rim here, which was left over from the keratoplasty and grafted on this eye. Then another complication is thinning of melting of the cornea. When the cornea gets thin, or melt it, then the option is to do the amniotic membrane graft or usually the keratoplasty if you've got a cornea available. So these are the options are for thin or melting cornea. Then is the desmetosil. What is desmetosil? The cornea is so thin that only the desmet membrane is remaining and the whole stroma has got melted. Now, this is very thin and likely to get perforated. If it's a very small one, you can treat it conservatively. Otherwise, you have to do the keratoplasty like done here. Another complication which is serious is perforation of the cornea. It's a serious problem in a way. If you don't urgently address it, then the contents of the eye can come out and the things get worse. There are many options in your armory depending on your expertise. If the cornea gets perforated and you've got another cornea available from a donor, then you can do the penetrating keratoplasty like we have done here. The cornea was taken from a donor and the ulcer was replaced with another cornea and we call it keratoplasty. Another option is suturing. If you don't have anything else, you can use it as a temporary option. Then is the tissue glue. Tissue glue is a cyanoacrylate glue and you take a small piece of plastic, put the glue on it and paste it onto the cornea and the perforation gets closed for a certain amount of time till you do the permanent treatment. Another option is amniotic membrane. You can fill a small perforation with the amniotic membrane and put another patch of amniotic membrane on it. So it's another option, another thing in your armory. Then is the conjunctival slab. If it is peripheral, then you can bring the conjunctiva and plug the gap with the conjunctiva, and that's an option if you don't have the other options or better options available. Then is the scleral patch. You take a small piece of sclera from the patient and just suture it directly onto the perforation. So these are the options which we can use in case of perforation 
and remember all these are MCQs. So the options are keratoplasty, sutures, tissue glue, amniotic membrane, conjunctival flap, and scleral patch. Another complication is the new vessels. If the new vessels develop, if they're only small and peripheral, you can leave them and treat them conservatively. Or you can do the cautery to the main feeder vessel, like we did the cautery to the main feeder vessel here. Or you can use anti-VEGF injections. Or if the, if the new vessels are all around and obstructing the vision, you can even do the keratoplasty, though it will be a high-risk keratoplasty. Then if there is corneal scarring, that can be dealt in different ways. If it's a small scar not obstructing vision too much, you can leave it. You can do the excimer laser to remove a superficial scar. You can do the DALC, which is deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty, if the scar is relatively deep. Or you can do the penetrating keratoplasty, which means replacing the whole cornea. Here, the penetrating keratoplasty was done. Another complication is extension of ulcer into the anterior chamber or seeding into the anterior chamber. Look at the ulcer here. The ulcer is a small, but it is extending into the anterior chamber. It can be treated by treating the ulcer itself with intrastromal injections, and the extend, extended form into the anterior chamber is treated with either intracameral antibiotics or intracameral wash. If you don't succeed, then the only option you're left with is a keratoplasty. So these are the options for extension of the ulcer into the anterior chamber. Then is the endophthalmitis, which means the infection has gone into the eye, including the vitreous cavity. You treat the ulcer, you do the intrastomal injections, you do the intracameral antibiotics, pass plantar vitrectomy, and evisceration. These are the options if you have got endophthalmitis. Here in this patient, the ulcer was too severe and extending into the eye, and we did the evisceration for this patient, which means removal of the eye contents, only leaving the sclera behind. Thank you very much for being with me. Do press the bell button on your screen to keep getting the notifications of the upcoming lectures. Thank you.